Hey, I'm Sunny Simpkins, and today we're working on our IMCA stock car project. We're packing the bearings for our Grand National Rear End. Let's get to it. Coming up on the Motor City Throwdown. Now, before we get into it, I kind of just want to go over exactly what we're dealing with. So we got our rotor and hub right here. They were both completely rusted out um, when we first got it, but we got it all cleaned up. We used some steelage which is some pretty amazing stuff. It's a little bit expensive. I think it's around $30, but it's what we also use it on everything, especially our rear end here, which we just fixed up. We also got our, the nut, the seal and the bearing, and then the little lock thing. Oh yeah, but it's a good thing we checked all this out because there was no grease in here at all. So we would have ran it on practice day and then blew it up and it would have been a disaster. But it would have made for some good content. These are our brakes, and they look pretty good too. Um, these weren't as rusted as everything else, but we still got it fixed up pretty nice. All right, so I'm gonna use gloves on this just because personal preference, you don't have to, but it does help a little bit in the long run. We also have this SD20 degreaser, and it really does the trick. We're gonna be using this to clean up everything, and then of course some towels. So. So the grease that we're using is going to be the STP Molly EP. Usually we go with red tack just because people prefer thicker greases because in the rear end, the gear oil, it travels through and it will start dissolving grease because of the high temperatures. This one should be good. It is labeled for extreme pressure and heat applications. So this is going to do the trick, but typically we go with the red tack. But this will be our grease for trying it. It also does look rather appetizing, if you ask me. For the Grand National, the inside and outside bearings, there's no difference. So we got these at our local race shop. It's time to grease them up. For this, you do want to get quite a bit. So you pretty much get a scoop, some on the tip of your fingers, and then put it on the palm of your hand. Now, we have this little towel laid out also, so we're not making a huge mess on the ground, but you're gonna get the bearing and just start. All right, so you don't really wanna clean this thing, but just make it look pretty. So I'm trying to get off the excess chunks by just like spinning my finger inside of it. Look at that, boom, that could be spared. Just making it look more appealing, I guess. Now we're going to start putting it all in the hub. For this, you need a little bit of grease on just one finger. And we're going to lightly coat the bearing. You don't want to get this on the top part because that's where the seal goes. It's, you need that thing to stick real good. So just keep it on the silver part right here of the bearing. All right, we're going to put a little bit of grease on the hub right here, even on the thread, just so it really gets in there. Just gonna lightly put a layer there. Look at that, perfection. Now it's time to put it all together. So we're gonna take one, we're gonna lightly drop it in here. There you go. And then kind of just spin it around to make sure nothing's weird or funky, which it looks like this one is good cleaning this off because I got grease where I said not to put grease. So I'm just gonna try to clean it lightly. Good enough. But I do want to talk about this little ring here. This is a retaining ring and some of these models they don't have it. Now if you're trying to knock this out when you're taking everything apart you can hit it from the back and then it will pop out. But if you have this retaining ring it, you can hit it as hard as you want and it won't come out. So you just have to know what model you have and if you have one of these, make sure you unlock this thing first. Now, if you weren't paying attention before, you wanna pay attention now because this is where you can start damaging the high dollar parts. And you don't wanna wait for an order from Speedway. So what you do, we got here, seal here. You wanna put it in here and just lay it in there, kind of push it in there so it gets in there. I think it's a little bit sideways we'll be able to get it. Now, what you want to use is a soft hammer. No metal ones or else you will break this thing. You kind of just want to 
tap it in. Eventually it will go in, but just tap it in. We got a backup bearing and we're gonna use this to tap it in fully. So just gonna, oh, not like that. And of course, watch your fingers. And you can hear it when it hits the burn because it does change the sound. Now, if you look in there, you can see the groove for the ring. Slowly feed this in and just work your way around putting it on the inside. And, and Very important, you wanna make sure that the bearing moves freely like it does now. If it doesn't, it wasn't for us earlier, you gotta flip this thing around, and then just tap the bearing so it pushes up against the retaining ring, and then it'll start moving free. All right, it's time to put this thing on. So this should be fitting in very easy, making our way in. There we go, look at that. And if you are having to hammer it in, you might have a wrong part somewhere. So I wanna check on that. Some grease on your finger and then just a light coat. Same as before with the inside bearing. Just spread it on in there. We got our second one ready. So flat side out, we're just gonna put it in there. There's a little bit of a technique with this. So when you push it in, you're gonna put your hand all the way surrounding this with all your fingers. Push it in and then also kind of push in with this too. And then push that on in there. We'll get seated in there. Then what you want to do, make sure you slide this. You'll notice if there's anything funky, there might be a mistake through. But this one looks pretty good. For the lock and the nut, there is a right way to do this and a wrong way to do this. The wrong way is the way that we actually got it. So you put the lock and the flat side together. You'll see that there is a little bit of space in between. It will never be able to tighten to because the keys will catch and it'll just never be right. That leads room for imperfections to take place and just bad things to happen. The right way is for the curved beveled side and the lock. So you'll feel it. It feels natural. You just put that in there and that's the way to do it. There's a little slot here. You might be able to see it. Just gonna make sure it's in right. So I found mine. I'm just gonna put it in there, slide it in, boom. That's been done. Now we're gonna put this, don't forget the curved side, put it in there. And just kind of screw it in there. When you have it on, to make sure that it's fully on, you wanna kind of just twist this around push it back and forth, it's not moving. If it is loose and it's moving back and forth, you got something wrong. But it is fully tightened. I use the flat head to tighten it by just putting this on there, going like that, and then slowly tightened up. Now, it is a little bit too tight when I spin it. It's got some tension. You don't want tension because that could bind up the bearing and everything, which is bad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna back up the nut a little bit by doing pretty much the opposite way with the screwdriver or the flathead. You're gonna back it up. That might be a little too much, but you'll see it's loose, looser at least. So it's fully spinning. Now to make sure your wheel doesn't go flying off, you gotta make sure that you lock one of the keys inside the little locks here. You just find the closest one, push it down with flat head or something, and then you're good. Only need one, and one will do the job. Now we got our screw. We've got a little device here to really make it tight. However, we put some lock tie on it. Highly recommend it because this thing will wheel back out. You don't want that. So we're just gonna push this flush and then put this in there and then screw it in. And that's how you get it done. Final product, we've got the 
spray gun there and then the little cover right here. Hopefully you learned something. And look at this. Perfect. See you on the track.